the viewout is fine and the steering wheel has a wider range of adjustment making it easier to find a good driving position. While the interior design is generally pleasing, some of the color schemes are jarring. In some versions, the middle section of the dash is molded in light shades of beige and gray, which we found discordant. And the panel surrounding the shifter is molded in glossy white plastic on all versions, as is the central console on higher trim levels. The dealers can exchange this console for a black one, and we would definitely take advantage of this option. On the road, the car feels very solid and definitely quieter than its predecessor. There's not a hint of the occasional tininess that occasionally came through the structure over larger bumps. Although Toyota made fun to drive a major priority, the Prius still doesn't figure very high on that scale. However, the new control arm rear suspension does improve handling with less understeer and sharper turn in. You can hustle along very quickly on a winding road with far more confidence than the old Prius could impart. Even the feel of the electric power steering has been improved with stronger self-centering and more pronounced force buildup, particularly in harder corners, although there's still a dead zone on center. Brake feel is still compromised by the need to combine the regenerative electric braking with the hydraulic system, but it's not hard to drive the car smoothly. Performance seems pretty much unchanged, but we won't know for sure until we properly test a production car. It all adds up to a Prius that looks and feels a little more normal than any previous version. But even in this age when fuel economy is steadily improving across the board, this new Prius retains its position as the most fuel-efficient car that doesn't use a plug and by a considerable margin. Expect the Prius to become more popular than ever.